Hello and welcome back to Politically Incorrect. I'm Tom Cristiano. Well, tonight I'm very pleased that we have another special show, and this one is a contemporary artist special with six uh, artists from Massachusetts, and they're all fantastic, wonderful artists, as I'm sure you'll see once you see their work. Uh, with me tonight, we have Paul Padula. How are you, Paul? Hey, Tom. Great to be here. Thanks for being here, Paul. And uh, some people may know that your brother is the director of our show, Pete Padula. That's right. He he's, uh, works here for a long time at Trump to Telemedia. He's one of the, maybe the assistant director of Trump to Telemedia or something. He's way up there. <laughs> and uh, he's, excuse me, he's doing great. And uh, so it's great to finally have you on the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And you grew up in Chelmsford, right? Well, I did. And went to Chelmsford High Schools all the way through? I actually was in this room as a TV anchor man in junior high. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was part of the uh, morning news show. The morning news show, yeah. wow, wonderful. <laughs> oh, so in this Parker? In, in Parker this very show? room. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so you had no trouble finding the place no. anyway, we know that. <laughs> well, thanks for being here, Paul. We'll come back and talk to all of you uh, quite a bit later on. Thanks, Paul. And we have my friend Don Roulette with us tonight. How are you, Don? I'm fine. Great to be with you today. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm so glad you could be here, Don. Um, Don ha has a studio at Western Avenue in Lowell, right, Don? Yes. And that's where I probably first met you, right? I believe so. And um, how long have you been there at Western Almost Avenue? Almost five years now. Five years. Yeah. And I've been a member of the Chelmsford Art Society. Oh, and yeah. I've been to many of the shows there, and we've met there as well. Yes, you uh, went to our meeting last month, right? Chelmsford mm -hmm. Art Society, didn't you? Yeah, it was great. Uh, matter demonstration. Fact, the demonstration was wonderful. It was the most well-attended demonstration that I could remember in many years. It must have been over 50 people there. Uh, yes, it was really well-attended, and it was a, a great demonstration. Yeah, he's a, he, he was, had a lot of sense of humor. What was his name again? Do you remember? Um, St Stapleton, Stapleton, Stapleton Kearns. Stapleton Kearns. Yes. I said, yeah, thank you. Great guy. Well, thanks, Don, oh, for being pleasure. here. And we have my friend Tim, Trina Teal with us tonight. How are you, Trina? Good. How are you doing? Good, good, thanks. Trina, you did a demonstration at the library just a couple of days ago, right? On yes, Saturday. I did. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was actually part of the Art Society, um, their demonstration uh, link, but, but it was on a Saturday rather than their normal night because it was at the library. And it was, you did a wonderful job. It was about um, using the computer to make art, right? Paint, painting with the computer? Yes, it was, it was primarily about um, using the iPad as sort of a step beyond uh, the sketchbook. But it also did talk about creativity and, and the use of a blog. <laughs> so oh, it, yeah, was, it yeah. was sort of uni uh, merging all those three things together. It was great. As you saw my post on Facebook, right, how much I enjoyed it the yes. next day I posted well, thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you. So uh, we'll talk to you in a couple of minutes, okay. Trina. And we also have my friend Rita Thompson with us today. Hello. Hi. Along, you, along with Trina and uh, Donna Berger, have studios at the Chelsea Center for the Arts, yes. right, Rita? That's right. And you, you three have been there pretty much since it became the Trump Center for the Arts, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And you have studios there. And mm -hmm. you've been an artist for a long time, right? We'll talk more about it later. But yeah, very long time. Very long time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> Wonderful. And we'll talk all about your background. So thanks all for right. being here, Rita. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And we have my friend Paula Mingalelli with us, another former Chelmsford person, yes. now temporarily living in Tingsboro. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you and your husband, Pat, uh, were big fixtures here in Trumpton, the political yes. scene. Yes, And so Paula is an extraordinary, you're all extraordinary artists, but I, in fact, I have bookmarks of Paula Mingalelli's that every night I'm reading my book of, about Norman Rockwell at, at the moment, and she has this beautiful uh, pen and ink and watercolor bookmarks that she, she practically gave to me or did give to me, and they're fantastic. Thank you. Was that to get on my show? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. No, I'm only kidding. I'm That's only kidding. That's because of your support. You come up to the studio all the time. And you are so wonderful, it. too. You and very often Peggy is there. Yes, and, uh, there all the you're time. You're always so friendly and uh, have the best desserts and everything, which I love. <laughs> you got to visit Paula Mingalelli's. <laughs> We're talking at her, her Western Avenue right. studio in Lowell, where Don has a place. Yes. and and. Uh, Myself and, and Don and, and Virginia. Who will get, well, thanks, thanks okay, you're for welcome. being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And we have Virginia Peck with us tonight, a wonderful artist. Mm -hmm. Hi, Thank Virginia. You. Virgin Hi. Virginia has a studio also at Western Avenue Studios in Lowell. Right. Just and about a year. That's all. Not oh. as long as. Oh, long. you've been there about a year, but you've yeah. been a very successful artist for a while, right? Because you had a studio 
a representation on Newberry Street in Boston, right? Yeah, and I've actually connected with them again recently, so I'm yeah. going to be back working with them again. So. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Virginia Peck, which is so, I think, extraordinary, is that I have a page on Facebook with almost 1,800 subscribers on it called Daily Meditations, and many of you, if not all of you, are on that page. So I look on the internet for wonderful artists, right, so with their paintings that go along with the quotes, and the quotes are non-denomination, just uplifting type quotes, you know. So I found Virginia Peck's work, right, because she does these beautiful paintings of Buddhas and, and other types of subject matter, but the Buddhas stuck out to me in particular because they're very spiritual. So two or three or four number of times over like a year, I've been using Virginia's work uh, along with my daily meditations posts, and then I come, somehow came across a Facebook post that she lives and is working or has a studio right in Lowell. I couldn't believe it. I said, Virginia Peck is near me. I couldn't believe it. So I couldn't wait to get to the Western Avenue studios and meet you, yeah. which I ultimately did. And you are such a wonderful spiritual person. It was Aww. fantastic to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, I'm sure everybody will see that once we talk more on the show and see your beautiful paintings. You brought a couple of paintings with us tonight. Mm -hmm. So, and Virginia is just, uh, you're all amazing artists. So thank you all so much for being here, first of all. So maybe if we could start a little more um, in-depth discussion with Paul, is that okay, Paul? Sure. Paul, is it okay if we, uh, could you hold up your, yeah, the painting absolutely. you brought with us tonight? And could you tell us a little bit about this painting, um, what medium it is? And, and um, when the, you the title of the painting is uh, Around the Dune. <laughs> Around the joint, yeah, you can see, yeah, good. And uh, it's an acrylic painting, acrylic on canvas. And um, I guess I painted this, it was either 2013 or, oh, 2012, I guess. I just had to look. <laughs> and it's acrylic. And you do a number with the, well, a lot with the blue sky like that, which everybody loves. Yep. And then some with the roads, though. What, what is the significance of the roads and the yellow lines on the road or anything? Um, is there a meaning to them? or? The roads, uh, I love painting roads. I'm not exactly sure why, um, but uh, certain roads will catch my attention and I feel like I need to paint them. Some of them are out of my head. Some of them are imaginary. Yes. And yeah. uh, some of them are real roads. So. Yeah. Yeah. And where did, where did you learn to paint so wonderfully, Paul? Uh, I'm actually a relatively new painter. I, yeah. I started in 2006. Of and painting fine art kind of? Yeah. yeah. I, started taking classes and I can actually remember being in this school in the eighth grade when our when art was finally not mandatory anymore and thought when am I going to do art again and it didn't happen again until 2006 but wow. things have happened kind of fast since then yeah uh, Paul is being is very successful now with his work selling it I think throughout the world right didn't you sell one in Germany a while yeah. ago and for thousands of dollars right Paul yeah. so uh, you're doing extremely well, especially since you've only been painting since 2006. <laughs> I know. I can't get over it. It's like amazing. Well, representation has had a lot to do with it. So. Oh, you, you, and which galleries represent you? Um, I'm, I'm represented by Serena and Lily, and they're out of uh, California, but they are worldwide, so um, that's been a big help. And I'm represented by a uh, Provincetown gallery called Alden Gallery, and uh, Columbus, Ohio gallery called the Sharon Weiss Gallery, cool. and um, Boston Art on in the Seaport District, wow. and uh, I show a lot of Thomas Moser Boston on Arlington Street. And how did you get into these galleries, uh, Paul? Do you, could you say? Um, sure, uh, it's it, they're all from different for different reasons, but uh, mostly they saw me in the South End. I have a studio at 450 Harrison Avenue in Boston. And uh, most of my contacts have come through that visibility. Yeah. Serena and Lily, however, um, they found me through the United South End Artist website. Oh. And that's how they contacted me. Wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. so many people love your work, right? Well, it must be a great feeling, right, to see all the, well, whenever you post something on Facebook, gets tons of thumbs up and comments. It's and, been and a wild ride, yeah. Yeah, and then the sales <laughs> is a great validation yeah. of your work, especially the prices that you're getting, which is wonderful. And your work seems to me, I call it kind of stark, uncluttered, Edward Hopper-esque in a way, in the sense that he also had a lot of uncluttered 
a starkness to his work. And you, you very often have an expanse of blue skies, sometimes with a little bit of clouds like you have here. Mm -hmm. And then um, the figures, of course, are new. So yeah, and lately you've been selling a couple of your figurative works, yeah. right? Which is interesting. So um, why do you feel the urge to paint in such an uncluttered kind um, of? It's a good question. Style? I think probably uh, there's a lot about my personality that's kind of uncluttered too. So maybe it's reflected onto yeah. the onto the canvas. But um, I think. The way I describe it is probably what I leave out of my work is just as important as what I put into it. Yes, mm -hmm. and it appeals to so many people. This, um, you know, uh, the Edward Hopper type style or whatever, just uncluttered. Not that you paint exactly like him because you don't, but um, that's always appealed to me. Edward Hopper is one of my favorite artists, way, way up there, if not my favorite. I, I know just about every one of his works. I visited his exhibits in New York and Boston, and uh, I, I just love that clean nature and the control of colors and I think you have that tremendous control as well you know oh, you don't you. put many many colors in there and you you seem to control everything so well and very often you put the top of a building like the top floor you right. know say it with a V <laughs> right uh, along with a big expanse of a sky and sometimes it'll be two of these little V tops of the houses in different colors, and you might call it green shade or right. whatever. And it's uh, <laughs> it's so interesting that, that that you came up with that style, which I haven't seen it exactly like that in anybody no, else. I can't say I have either, but I definitely have some unusual compositions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what sets you apart, Paul. You know, and why you're so successful because I think people are starting to collect you now as for future appreciation. <laughs> you might say, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful validation of your work. Well, thank you. Thank well, I'll come back later and we'll, sure. we'll see what uh, what Don has been doing. So, Don, could you uh, sure. hold up your painting there? <coughs> and what uh, This one is called Star Mood, and it really is the mood. Uh, the emotional part of painting is what excites me about a painting. And yeah. this is done similar to uh, an English painter. It would be more in the style of the English painters. This is completely yes. from imagination. Uh, it started out as something other than what it ended up being. And somewhere in the middle of the sky, it all of a sudden started to make me think of something else. And so I totally changed what my initial idea was about the painting and went strictly for the emotional uh, impact of the sky. And yes. from that kind of mood of the storm coming in and there's ah. still light so you can still see the buildings and the lambs, and, you know, the sheep that are in the field. Um, and it's really based on the English painters. I, yeah, that's over the years, I've been a painter, but I've also been a collector of art. Yeah. Uh, while collecting art, one of my favorite things is English watercolorists. And yes. so over the years, I've been able to buy and collect a number of really good English painters. And yes. uh, their work has always you know, been an inspiration to what I do. And yes. I like the mood. Uh, my teachers were always just going about that, it's mood. They paint the mood, and uh, my teacher was always more, if you know Carlton Plummer's work, oh, yes. yeah. Carlton would be definitely considered a high key painter. Yeah. And I studied with Carlton also, he was one of my teachers. Uh, but I tend to be a low key painter, meaning yeah. they're very calm, and if you see Carlton's work, it's really, it has some kind of impact because yeah. of the, it's that orange and the purples that he puts in it. Yes. And, yeah. But I, I do try to achieve the same ends, but using different means yes. and by going to the kind of quiet and places. Because I, I was exhibiting my work in Chelmsford recently and a lady came up to the exhibit, stood there and was just breathing and she says, Thanks. I just needed that. Yes. <laughs> it was just a moment to because there's the hustle and bustle of what's going on all yes. around us, yeah. and she felt like she says I just needed that moment of calm. Yes. And so that's really uh, what I try to achieve in the paintings that I paint. They're usually memories or reflections yeah. of uh, things that are calm. And well, it's a wonderful piece. Of, is, is that one in your studio at this the moment? Western, or is it sold? This is sold, and yeah. I'm actually I'm holding it because they're buying it on time, so uh, oh, yeah. I still <laughs> had it, and so yeah. I figured I would bring it because uh, it's, it's going to a private collection in Westford, and so there'll be a yeah. chance that they'll get to see it on time. I'm not surprised <laughs> it's sold because it's a wonderful painting. Thank and you. 
it's a classic, I think, as you said, it reminds me of 19th century painting mm -hmm. and um, beautiful control of the colors, I think, and uh, you know, you didn't accentuate any brightness or whatever that would, an amateur might do that, you know, just have too much red or something or bright mm -hmm. colors, and you, you controlled it so, and so well that it's a unified composition that in anybody's home, in Westford or Chelmsford or anywhere, a classy home, that would fit right in as a beautiful uh, thank you. I was uh, piece very of art. pleased with this particular. This also yeah. uh, was the best in show when I did a uh, uh, recent show in Drake it and Oh, uh, wonderful. The best. Harmony. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. So that was uh, a thrill because the artists that were Cho you know, doing the judging were all artists that I respected, and oh, yeah. it was a thrill to end up uh, winning that particular prize. Yes, and, and if people haven't been to the studios at Western Avenue, please stop by and see D John and uh, Virginia is there, and Paula, and everybody is so friendly there, not uh, only these artists, but all of them. It's a wonderful place to paint, and if you're interested in buying art, it, I <gasps> recommend the, the price point is anywhere from $50 to Wow. <laughs> yeah, many thousands of... You can spend as much as you can bring. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, but there is there's something for everybody. And all the artists are so friendly. And you have the open houses the first Saturday of every month, yes. right? From noon to 5 p.m. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Western Avenue is, is in Lowell, off mm -hmm. of School Street, you might right. say. Mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, right at the street. is called Western Avenue. Is that yes. right? And it's an old, like, factory mill buildings, which are wonderfully refurbished and re-designated uh, to be used for artists yeah, it's and it's a fabulous place. It's one of the largest complexes of its type in the eastern United States. Wow. wow. Uh, there are probably yeah, over 300 artists in there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it, it's, it really is an amazing place. It's great to go there in the morning and you have other artists of uh, like minds and you can bounce ideas off of your friends. You know, you yeah. can walk to Paula's studio and say, Paula, what are you working on today? Yeah, you know, yeah, and just, great, it, yeah. it really is, it's a yeah. great place to be. And I've been there in your studio where people would come in and, and you were selling to people, right, mm -hmm. while I was there. And so you do very well there, uh, Don, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's worked out very well, yes. Well, I'll come back later and, um, okay. and talk, thanks. So, Trina, could you show us what you brought today? Sure. Okay. Uh, Nice, uh, what is it, uh, acrylic? This is acrylic, and this uh, is called Nuance, and it is a, um, a, from a series of sunflower paintings that I did, um, and I think I, I, I tend to be more of a representational artist. Um, I start with something representational, but I want to go beyond um, photographic, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by what makes art, <laughs> and what is it that makes something art, and yeah and there's so many different kinds of art. And so when I look at a subject, I, I try to decide if, it, if it's gonna sort of captivate me and, and I'm gonna be able to paint it yes. <laughs> for that long of a time. You know, to pay enough attention, you really have to look at a flower for a long time yeah. to paint it. Yeah. And, and am, I go am I gonna be, you know, captivated by it? And so usually um, when I look at a flower, I look for some sort of a, a movement or a, a sway or an energy in it, and that's what I'm trying to captivate, and that's yes. what I'm going for. Um, and with some flowers in particular, I think they were my first flower to, to really fall in love with because they, they have such a mass that they, they're very figurative, and I love figure drawing, figure painting. Yes. That was something I loved when I was in school. and so. Painting uh, sunflowers was, was like painting figures to me. They, they had parts, <laughs> they had mass, they, they yes. had grace, yes. and, and that's what I wanted to go for. And I think maybe this painting, I've used it on the daily meditations, yes. I believe. I've loved all of your paintings and um, your sunflowers. I've used them numerous times <laughs> to go with these uplifting quotes because they're beautiful, natural, kind of uh, well done, uh, paintings that a lot of people enjoy. In fact, I just used one of your paintings of a flower about four days ago, and it received over 1,200 page views <laughs> within nice. one day. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it's very nice. And it was, I think it was one of a new one that you did. It was amazingly beautiful, as is this one. It's just yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And I love the way you have the, you control your colors so well. You know, you see, it's like the green and the yellows. You don't have too many colors all over the place. But you have a variety of tones of the same colors, you know, different yellows and oranges and greens. Yeah. And it, it's just Th wonderful. This flower in particular, um, I, I call it nuance, and it had yeah. sort of a, 
a flickering kind of light that, that captivated me, and it was as if it was hinting some, something. And so that's when I went with the word, uh, with the title, Nuance. Uh, nice. I, I often title my paintings with just one word, yeah, uh, maybe yeah. one or two words, but usually one word. And it's sort of a descriptive word, like the nuance. Or and you studied graphic design, is that right, Trina? Well, I, I majored in painting, but I got a concentration in, in graphic design. And, and I have worked in graphic design ever since I yeah. graduated. So Wonderful. So, um, and so did you do that um, in addition to the fine art painting, right? Yes. And you have a studio at the Chelmsford Center for the Arts on right. North Road in Chelmsford. Right. And people could visit you there periodically? Or yeah. Do you have set, oh, set hours or no? I don't, I don't have set hours. Um, yeah. My graphic design freelance work is very, you know, you don't know when it's going to come in. Yeah. And, um, and then I've, I've recently started teaching at a, yeah. at a, a local place called The Art of Wine, yeah. where we help people uh, get to experience paint for yes. the first time. And it's really, it's a thrill to be a part of because, uh, because so many people don't get to paint and they don't get to, to experience yes. what, what I love about painting. And, and I just, I've, I'm just so excited when I hear somebody will say in the class, they'll say, this is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, it just like lights up and, my night. And as I always write to you, Trina, after your students post pictures of the paintings, what a great teacher you are because yeah. these are amateur artists and they paint these boats and these butterflies and scenes so well, I think, mm -hmm. just after taking one of your classes there that night. Well, I lead okay. them through it step by step. step if they step, follow yeah. me, they can do it. If yeah. they do it on their own, they can do it. <laughs> there okay. is no right or wrong, so. Yeah. And I think it's what, $39 or something? Or yeah, I think it's 35 I'm not, I'm not totally yeah. sure. <laughs> and then they have like three samples of wine yes. if they want during yep. the night. Yep. And the supplies, are they included as well? Yes, everything's included. Oh. They go home with a 16 by 20 uh, painting. It's amazing, and they have a good time for yeah. what, two hours? Two and a half hours. <laughs> and yeah. is there a website where they could Yes, it, subscribe. It, it's um, the Art of Wine in Lowell, and it's wow. part of Tudo Bene Cellars. Tudo Bene, Bene Cellars. Tudo Bene oh, Tudo. Cellars, which is a wine and cheese shop. Nice. <laughs> well, thank you, Trina. We'll come back <laughs> okay. later. Thanks. And you have another painting we can look at yeah. later, right? <laughs> Hi, Rita. Hi, Tom. Hi. So you brought a painting with us today, right? Could yes. you tell us a little about your painting, Rita? Well, I call this painting Wednesday. I had a dry period, which I have every so often. Okay. And on Wednesday, I decided I would use the cobalt blue, yeah. cobalt teal, yeah. brown, and a yellow, and just see what happened. And when was this, Rita? And this was in November. In November, in November. Yeah. yeah. And you painted that, that in one that, day. In one day in, in November. One day. Well, I looked at it the next day, and there was a little tweak here and there. And yeah. a lot of times, I just give the paintings numbers. Yeah. Number one, 2010, or whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. And this time, I have a couple that worked on a particular day, and I'll, I have a painting called Monday, yeah. <laughs> because it worked on Monday. Nice. And nice. Uh, this is Wednesday. Yeah. So I paint abstracts now. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah, we get to, Would you mind lowering it a little bit Not so we all. can see you? The director might get mad at me if I didn't ask you that. Mm. I don't know, but. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, it's just so we could see you a little yes. bit. Oh, you didn't no, have that's, to move that's it fine. all the way down? That's fine. Oh, <laughs> but um, you have an interesting story how you studied art for a long time. You, you were painting more represented, realistic paintings. Yes. Remember, you, you told us at one of your art demonstrations, mm -hmm. and then you found it wasn't fun anymore, and you moved over to abstract, mm -hmm. right? Could you explain what happened there? Yeah, well, I, I, I grew up in the city, and I really relate to city buildings. Three deckers, I love them. Yeah. The interiors with the nasty furniture and the, the moldings, <laughs> the, the, the great yeah. details in the interior. So I was yeah. painting those kind of things. Yes. And so there's, you know, architecture, the tearing of architecture and perspective, yes. which yeah. you're always under. Uh, yeah. And f for years I did that. Many years. And sold the paintings? Or yeah. Were you also so. doing graphic design no. commercially? Or no, I know I was painting oh. full-time and teaching. And teaching, and teaching art or something? Yeah. Oh, great, great. Yeah. yeah, I had an acrylic workshop. Did you get a degree in art or something? Well, sort? actually, I um, was an art major from the seventh grade. Oh, you were? Boston wow. Public Schools back then were excellent with the art. Wow. And I went to the after-school program at the Museum of Fine Arts in high school. Wow. And then I attended the museum school. So you've been studying art your whole life? Yeah. 
So you always knew you wanted to be an artist, it sounds like. Yeah, and uh, I love Edward Hopper. He's one of my favorites. Oh, good. Good. Wonderful. Yeah. The yeah. city paintings. Yeah. Every yeah. time <laughs> people see me, they know I love Edward Hopper. I also yeah. post many of his on daily meditations mm -hmm. because it goes so well with yeah. peace and quiet and, and love and that kind of thing, compassion. Um, so, Rita, are you more comfortable with the abstract type of painting? Well, what right? happened is I did, I'm did. i doing a series of blue houses. There's certain houses that are painted, they are actually painted in ultramarine blue, a screaming ultramarine blue with white trim. There's some in Cambridge, there's some in Dorchester, there's one in Somerville. Whenever I see one, I take a picture of it and then I paint it. Yeah, nice. I've so I had a series of nice. the blue houses, and I still have some in the can that I haven't done yet. Oh, and yeah, the last yeah. one I did in 2005, it was Cambridge Blue Number 3. Yeah. And it was a, a Greek Revival three-decker, and yeah. I did it from the front. So we have the, the, um, the double bay yeah. and the columns and the dentals and uh, just everything associated with it. And it took Wonderful. more than six months because I worked on other things at the same time. But, but at the end, it owned me. I didn't own the painting. And it was like, this oh, isn't yeah. fun anymore. Yes. What? Yeah. And I found out that I had to do a painting. It was being exhibited in a, um, a gallery in Haverhill. And the, uh, the owner's mother had died of pancreatic cancer. And purple is the color. So he says, could you do a purple painting that we could uh, have a silent auction? Yeah. So I had a day to do it. Yeah. And I said, what could I do in a day? Yeah. <laughs> I know. So I said, well, I'll try a Jackson Pollock. Yes, so I yeah. got some purple and some white and just plim, boom, and yeah, yeah, and it was beautiful. Nice. And I said, "Boy, this is fun." Yeah. <laughs> and then afterwards, I had some paint left over, so I, well, I'll try another one. Yeah. And, and you've been doing it a lot lately, right? 2005. The yeah, Since 2005. 2005. Yeah, 2005. Yeah. Now and then I'll crank out a real one, but. Um, and you. I yeah. I like the color, color and texture. That's what it's yes, about. Yes. Yeah. You have good control of color. I think you you paint beautiful paintings. Well, thank you. And you have a studio also at the Chelsea Center for the Arts, yes. as we mentioned. And do you have set hours there too, or just Well, I, I try to come in Monday through Friday, usually from yeah. 10 to 3 or 4 10 or something to 3. like that. But and sometimes is the front door open? I'm sorry, or the back door? It depends on what's going on in the building. Oh, okay. Yeah. But people could uh, call me. Oh, uh, if they wanted to come in, yeah. if the door was locked. Yeah. But if the door is open, they could go up the stairs. Yeah. You're on the main floor. On the first There's floor. There's a basement floor, the main floor, the second floor. You're on yep. the main floor, all the mm -hmm. three right next, to Trina. <laughs> right next to Trina. Nice. So, well, wonderful, Rita. We'll, I'll come back later. We'll talk some more, hopefully. All right. Thanks. And we have Paula Miglelli, my good friend with us. Hi, Paula. Hi. Oh, this is that one I saw in your studio. Remember recently? Yes. I said, bring that to the show. Yes. I love it. This and I use it as a daily meditation yes, already, you did. I believe. I thank you very much. And when a lot of people walking by my studio, they're this stopping and they're beautiful. saying, is that your painting? So this is a little out of the realm of what I usually paint. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually am a true watercolorist representational yeah. but I can't go out of the box you yeah. know when I want to so I decided I've been mesmerized by these sunsets or the storms rolling in I've been taking a lot of reference photos and everything from Florida so this was my first one that yeah. I just completed and it is in oils and it's called uh, storms arising storms are I love it I love it's color. acrylic or it's oil, oil this one oil. is oil you do everything I oil, go from acrylic, acrylic to oil pen and ink. whatever suits my yeah. fancy at that time whatever I yeah. feel like doing but um, this one here um, I'm a color person I love vibrant color and so this is definitely representation of the color that, that you might have vibrant color vibrant color yes yeah are you going to do more like this because so many people loved it right Paula? I'm doing a series of this this yeah. will be on display in November another woman and I from Western Ever having a two man show oh. and it's going to be called dual interpretation we're going to interpret a similar reference and she's okay. going to use her style and medium and I'm going to use mine so there will be a wall with um where, Sunsets. Where will this at, show I'm be? sorry, that's at Western Avenue, and, Loading and Dog what? Gallery. At the Loading at Dog the Loading Gallery, Gallery. Two, come November. Two people will be featured, yes. you and this other person? Yes. Who's Denise, the other person? Denise Rainis. Oh, I know Denise. Denise. Yeah, yes, she's Denise been painting Rainis. a lot lately, too. She's been painting quite a bit. My God. Well, so. this is wonderful. So this is oil. This is and oil. Is this quick drying oil, or is it the regular no, slow no, drying no, type? No, 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 this is your true, you know, your true, it's not your water-based oils. Um, but it, it takes about, yeah. really, about a week to really dry. A week, Maybe a yeah. little longer for the whiter areas because white's pretty heavy. Yeah. And they're probably, uh, probably 15, 20 layers of paint on this. Mm. Oh. Wow. Glazing, glazing Oh, my paint. God, yeah. So that, that's how I paint, whether it's in watercolors or oils or acrylics. Has this sold yet? 
Oh. Not so jetty kind. Well, not okay. that I, if I could get a buy for now, be fine, but I do need it for the show in November. But <laughs> well, I, yeah, I can oh, paint yeah. another one. Well, yeah, well, you could <laughs> ask her to borrow it for a exactly, show. Exactly, exactly. That's correct. Yeah. That's, That's correct. wonderful. Well, this is a beautiful piece. I hope yeah. you do many more like I this, hope Paul. To. I and know. did you study art for a long time as well? I've been well? doing art since, I would say my first formal training was about eight years old when I did uh -huh. a three-month correspondence course. I'm sure everyone remembers that little article in Life magazine, <laughs> Can You Draw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, My yeah. mother actually did it for me. Yeah. Yes, she actually, uh, we did a correspondence a correspondence course. That's fantastic. And, and then did you study in well, high I, school and college as well? In high school, I, um, I went to a Catholic high school and they had no art. So I took mm. private lessons with a gentleman who was the director of art at Boston State College then, and I went to the Saturday program at Mass College of Art. Wow. And then I went, I have a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Mass College of Art. A Bachelor of Fine Arts, Mass yes. oh, that's fantastic. So and what an artist you are too, Paul. Well, the work you. that Paula does, if you, you got to visit her studio <laughs> and see this, this work is so Quite detailed and beautiful. I mean, a lot of it is realistic, right. beautiful, detailed. I don't know you have the patience for it, no, but I, you do, though. Right. I do Somehow have some, you do it. I do have some abstract pen and inks, but they're yeah. still detailed. Yeah. They're still detailed. Even the bookmarks you gave me, all the work you put into a little bookmark, yes. it's like two inches by five inches, yeah. and it's amazing. They are detailed. And this pen and ink, <laughs> pen and, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. That's okay. Right. It's my and I do, I do teach at Western Ave. I have a studio at Western yeah. Ave. I teach yep. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays? Thurs Tuesdays is oil and acrylic studio class. Thursday is beginning watercolor. And I also okay. do that paint along that Trina had mentioned. Uh, privately, myself, I have one uh, this coming Saturday. It's oh, to reveal the artist. And where, where is that? At my studio. At your studio. Mm -hmm. And how many people generally I go? take about eight to ten, no more than oh, eight that's to ten. And yeah. what do you charge for that? Paul? It's $35. 35 dollars So if anybody's interested in that. They contact me. And what's the best way to contact? Could you give out no. your website or your whatever page you want? Um, your phone um, number? You could give that out. On my blog, you know, yeah. Mingo Fine Art at blogspot.com or my email address. Which is? The, the Creative Hands at Comcast.net. The Creative Hands at Comcast.net. Beautiful. Well, hopefully people get in touch with you. It well, sounds great. It's a fun Along thing. with Trina's classes. Yes. Those sound fantastic. Yes. Gee. Uh, well, thank okay. you very much, Paul. We'll talk more thank in you. a minute. Okay. Our time is zipping by. I can't believe it, right? But <laughs> no. I'm having so much fun. Are you guys having fun? No? <laughs> sure. It's like, Hi, Virginia. Hi, so, Tom. I see you have one of your beautiful Buddha paintings, right? Yeah. It looks like we can't get the whole oh, thing in. There we go. <laughs> maybe you could put it next to me. How about like this? And then we could see you and your... And, um, okay. Right, and so this is the type of painting I saw on the internet. Somehow I found this, these Buddha paintings that Virginia does in a variety of colors, but similar to this, you know, a, a similar theme, uncluttered, beautifully drawn, beautifully executed. And I found these paintings years ago, and uh, I used them on my daily meditations page on Facebook. And now we have the genuine artists right here. I can't believe it. Virginia Peck is right here. <laughs> so Virginia, could, first, could you tell us a little bit about a painting like this and sure. uh, the medium you use, what it means, why you started doing them? Sure. Um, when I first started doing the Buddha paintings, I was working in oil. Yeah. And then I moved to Lowell, and I got a, a, a loft a condo okay. right on the river. Yeah. And um, so, and I was working in my loft, and I decided I didn't want the, you know, the smell of the um, paint thinners and stuff 24-7. Yeah. And so I switched to acrylic. And I believe this one is uh, one of the acrylic ones. And um, so uh, I begin with a uh, abstract underpainting, very colorful abstract underpainting that, uh -huh. you know, I have no idea what's going to, how the painting will go on top of it, but I just let loose, have fun. Yeah. And um, then I choose, um, you know, a Buddha image. And whenever I travel, I go to um, uh, museums and I take pictures of all the Buddhas. Um, everyone always says, oh, have you been to Southeast Asia? <laughs> <don't>, no. <laughs> <laughs> but people yeah. have said, I think you were Asian in a previous lifetime. And I think, I, I, I think you're right. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you have the underpainting. So I have the underpainting, uh, and um, then I, with charcoal, I, I draw oh. on the, the image, yeah. and then I start um, layering um, complementary colors yeah. on top of the underpainting colors. And um, 
So in this case, it would be the blue and orange kind of complementary colors? Yeah, would yeah, you see a lot of that. This is showing a lot of the underpainting here. I didn't cover it yeah. up as much, so yeah. you get to see a little of it here. Yeah, which is like a rose color? The, well, that it was, it's what? many, I mean, oh, that's, oh, that's what's oh, tricky. The, the there, there is oh, yeah. some yeah. painting over there, some layering on it, just not as much. Yeah. So you're, you're seeing a you know, little bit thinner um, rendition of it there. And um, yeah, and so then I'm, it, it's this constant uh, decision making, as you all know, with paintings, <laughs> of what to um, use what the, of the underpainting that is enhancing the image and what needs to be um, covered up kind of. It's, it's, yeah. it's not working, you know. Yeah. But there's, there's gestural marks, there's uh, certain colors that um, are working with it and giving me ideas that I wouldn't have thought of if I was just trying to do a Buddha head. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. It's like that is inform the underneath is informing what's happening on top and enhancing yeah. it. So how do you yeah. do, do you use a brush or a knife or both? I'm most a palette knife. mostly palette knife. So okay. I, I add um, so when I worked in oil I would add um, marble dust to the paint to give it oh. more volume and texture, but with acrylic I'm adding modeling paste. Modeling paste, nice. Yeah. And so you and, said and with using both brush with and with, with so the with palette. the eyes, this kind of detail. Did you do that with a palette knife, um, or, or do you well use certainly? A yeah, those areas. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I'm uh, the the charcoal has given me the, the the outline of the different parts of the face and yeah. stuff. So then once I you know I, I can use a palette knife uh, quite a bit. Um, so oh. it's not as much brush as palette knife. But you have a tremendous mastery, not only of the uh, composition, but of color as well. How did you learn to be such a great colorist? Because looking at all your paintings, you could see the control of color. colors that you have. I love color. And like I this, you could just tell that she has a tremendous mastery of color, mm. Virginia does, right? <laughs> so how did you learn that, Virginia? Or was it instinctual? Um, I wouldn't say it was mm. that in instinctual. I mean, maybe it is, but... Um, I went to the museum school also, and I had a great color course there, the oh, Joseph yeah. Albers uh, yeah. color mm. course. <laughs> oh, nice. And, um, you know, and they'd have you, like, mix grays and, um, you know, put different colors together and see what would happen and stuff. And it, <coughs> I, I think a lot of people who draw well will never go into color. They're afraid of color. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the black and white works so well for them. Yes. Um, but this was really helpful to get you not afraid of color, you know, oh, look, yeah. what you can do, and it's kind of fun experimenting and stuff. Yes. And so, so you have a studio at Western Avenue, right? What, what's the number of your studio? Two? It's uh, A202. A202. Mm -hmm. and right near um, the Loading Dock Gallery. Near mm -hmm. the Loading Dock Gallery, and you're, you're usually there the opening Saturdays, right? The right. first Saturdays of every month. Yeah. If people want to come by and see your work or talk to you. Definitely. I'd love <laughs> to have them come by, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Sure. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, well, thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Welcome. Um, is there anything else you want to say about this particular painting before we move on? Then we can come back later, hopefully. Okay. Um, it's it's called I Innocence. I just want to hold it. Yeah, the color. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I can talk about where the Buddha image came from. Oh yeah, please, a little please. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I was doing yoga and meditation for about seven years yeah. and doing a lot of spiritual studies too, reading up about. Buddhism and Hinduism and all of that. And um, then one morning I was sitting meditation and it was just like the light bulb went off and I was like, I could paint the face of Buddha. I always love to paint faces. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like this perfect com combining of the spiritual interest with the painting. Yes. And so I've been painting Buddha ever since that was 2004. 2004. And I just wow. feel it's like this bottomless um, yeah. well of inspiration for me yes. and meaningfulness yeah. and so it's like I'm always interested when I go to the canvas and I'm going to do another Buddha. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> seems to love them, right? They, they sell very well. Like you yeah. representative on Newberry Street, right in the gallery there? Yeah, I was with and them for a couple of years and then I had a lot of pain in my hands and yeah. I kind of burned out because it wasn't fun, it was painful. <laughs> And I quit for two years, and so I've just been painting again since, um, as I said last year when I came to the studios, Western Ave. And um, so I just got in touch, or they got in touch with me, kind of like, how are your hands? Are you, 
are you are you painting? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I said, uh, actually, I am. And so we're gonna they're gonna start representing my work again, which is great. This oh, summer they're gonna yeah, have wonderful. a show in the Hamptons, and then ne next fall in in November they're gonna I'm gonna be in a three person show that's all gonna be kind of based around Buddha and stuff. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. And your website? Do you have a website called Virginia Peck? Or Virginia Peck dot com. Dot com. You can find the works there. And then this is a print actually, and right. I also have a print business called Faces of Buddha. Dot com, and I sell a lot of prints, and uh, that's also kind of part of my website. But that's where people can order uh, prints. And they're fantastic. Faces of Buddha. Too. Com. Faces of Buddha. Dot com. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Virginia. Thank you. you have, hopefully, we can talk about your other painting later. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And maybe if we could talk to Paul again for a minute. And every, our time is zipping by. I can't believe it. So, we, hopefully, we could talk to everybody again for a couple of minutes. And Paul. Um, what are your aspirations? What, what are your goals in terms of the art world? Do you want to be in the Metropolitan Museum of Art someday, that kind of thing? What, what is your ultimate goal? You know, it's interesting. Um, I really, I have no goals. I'm pretty clear about that. Um, I, I, in a lot of ways, I feel like um, my goals might limit me. I think I'd rather be just kind of open to yeah. what the universe has in store for me. Mm. So um, that's how I've approached it since the beginning. Amazing. Were you so surprised when your art started selling so well? Uh, it was a little surprised. <laughs> um, but it's, it's interesting because uh, when I started in 2006, I knew that I had to do it. it was, I, I refer to it, you may have read some articles about me, but I refer to it as a calling. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I have to paint. Isn't that strange? And I, and I did. I started painting. I started taking classes and getting studio space. And, and that's all I knew. I didn't know beyond that. So I just and tried to stay in the moment and tried wow. to you work paint. with my work. And do you paint every day, Paul? Probably? No, I don't paint every day. How there are days about? when I do, there are weeks when I do paint every day. Yeah. And then maybe a week will go by if I, and I don't paint yeah. at all. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, it's, even that, I try and stay in the moment with. And do you have a studio, did you say, where you actually go in and paint, mm -hmm. rather than in your, you yeah. live in Cambridge now, right? I live in Cambridge, okay. and okay. Uh, my studio in Cambridge is uh, walkable from where, where I live. Oh. Um, and that's good, I can get there in 10 minutes walking. Uh, but I also have shared exhibition studio space at 450 Harrison Ave oh, in yes, the south yeah, end of nice. Boston. And, um, I have painted there as well, but I do most of my most of my painting at uh, in Cambridge. It must be nice to have a studio like that place to go to with all your supplies. Yeah. Do you always paint it in acrylic, by the way? Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, very yeah, much so an far? acrylic painter. I, I, why? And I, what Virginia was saying had a lot to do with it. Mm. I um, I really wanted acrylic from the beginning because of the. It, I just thought it was more ecologically friendly and more uh, healthy somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fast drying aspect of it That's versus true too. and the quicker cleanup than oils. <laughs> well, as they say about acrylic painting, the, the biggest disadvantage is that it dries fast and the biggest advantage is that it dries <laughs> yes, fast. Yes, yes. So <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Paul. Let's, we'll see what Don, uh, how, so Don, could you tell us um, what your ultimate goal is in your artistic endeavors? I had actually worked in Chelmsford for approximately 18 years. I used to work oh. at Stickney and Poor the spice oh. company on Alpha Road and was there for 18 years as oh. the procurement manager. Really? At oh. some point I got laid off and went to work at Trex Medical in Bedford and then yeah. to well, ho Logic. And uh, after getting laid off, uh, I was probably 54, I decided that I'm all done. I've had, I've done the working thing yeah. and yeah. the thing. studio was in the back of the house and it was a matter of my wife was good enough to keep working and so my wife Jean, uh, kept working and she says, paint, if mm -hmm. you want to paint, paint. And so I would wake up in the morning and just literally walk out to the studio and paint. Wow. And, uh, Five, six days a week, seven days? As, as, as much days as you want. <laughs> and uh, yeah. eventually, uh, Freddie Simon came into my studio one day and he looked around and he says, my God, you have to have a show. <laughs> and I yeah. says, what do you mean? He says, well, what are you gonna do with all these paintings? <laughs> <laughs> I says, well, I hadn't thought that far in advance. <laughs> I would just want to paint. Yes, yes. And 
things worked out. I put a painting in a show at the Whistler House Museum. It won Best in Show at the Whistler House in the Members Show, and it gave me my first one-man show. Wow. And at that show, we sold, I think, 14 paintings wow. that day. At and the Whistler. From that point on, it wow. be, Freddie was right. You have to have a show. <laughs> yeah. And it was funny how his just that one s simple statement was yes. enough to get me out the door. Well, how and many years ago was that when you sold the 14 uh, paintings at the Whistler? Approximately five. About I believe five? Oh, five that years. recently. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, not that long how ago. How long have you, have you had your Western Avenue studio? Right around five years. About pretty the same close time. to five years. So that's years, when yeah. really things started going. Everything started, started to go. Clicking. Well, if you're going to sell paintings, you can't very well sell them out of the house. No. <laughs> that's not zoned <laughs> no. for a business. So yeah. I created a business and yeah. Part of the thing was going to Western Avenue was the perfect place to be. Yeah, and it's, what's it's zoned for business. <laughs> you can yeah. sell out of the studio, and so. And how do you do? You do very well there in terms of selling your it's paintings. It's worked out. Yeah, it's, it's worked, worked out, out extremely well. well. Yeah, and I'm very pleased with it. Wonderful. Yeah, and I see you. Your your <laughs> wonderful wife is there with you. Every open house that I've been there. Yes, yeah, she's, she's somebody's so nice to take to care of that kind yeah. of stuff, and she's always done a great job with that. Mm -hmm. And she's very good. Uh, she worked in customer service for 27 oh. years, and so she's a good people person. She's very yeah. good at talking to As people. As you are, and, too. I always enjoy you. talking with you in your studio. Dot. What's the number of your studio? It's uh, 533. 533. I'm on the fifth floor, not and far from the freight elevator. I see, yeah, 533. I do you have a website too, or some way where people can get in touch, or look at your work, or buy your work? They can see it. My son's actually right in the middle of creating a new website, oh. so the old one is right at the moment is down. But it'll be uh, Don Willett Art, and that'll be up n in the near future because uh, he's going to load all Wonderful. the new paintings and stuff. Because the ones that were on the other website, are, most of those have been sold. So you, I really want to have new work up there. Wonderful. And uh, recently, I just started working where oh. this is a rather small painting, I started working on very large paintings. Nice. And nice. so. It's good to have the variety too, you know, and especially as I think you get more well-known and your work is selling, then I think it's worth it to produce the larger mm -hmm. ones. For someone who doesn't sell them, then they just accumulate in your house and you don't know. <laughs> I know what that feeling is like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to have paintings accumulating. <laughs> well, thanks, Don. Oh, Thank, my you. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And Katrina, could I ask what your ultimate goals are in the artist world? <coughs> Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm similar to Paul, if, but I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm definitely, uh, when, when I look backwards, I can see how things connect, how the dots connect, yeah. but, but I don't know how they're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to keep trying new things, you know, yeah. keep trying. Uh, this iPad thing that I told you about, uh, yeah. that we were talking about, um, was a new thing that I just figured, well, I might as well share what I know about it yes. and um, yeah. how it's helped me. And and um, and in 2010, I began a blog um, where I sort of set a challenge for myself of creating of creating something daily, yeah. and you know crea creating something could be anything. It could be you know it could be a sketch or a painting, or it could be a garden project or a cooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know it could be anything that I could take a photo of and and put onto my blog, and really. Um, by doing that, I, I got such a strong sense of, you know, I, I, I do create a lot, and, and I am an artist, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and I don't know where it's going to take me, but, yes. but it did yeah. sort of, a, a couple years ago, I, I got involved with doing the um, iPad art yes. on my blog, and, um, and then that led to doing the presentation. So, so, you know, everything sort of organically evolves, and you don't uh -huh. really know, and, it, and likewise, being at the Chelmsford Center for the Arts, um, that has sort of exposed me to all sorts of art opt opportunities as well. Oh, it has? In, so in what way, Trina? Well, that, that's uh, how I ended up teaching at, oh. at the Art of Wine. But, um, yeah. but then, then I've had lots of shows and, and met yeah. lots of artists. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it's, it's just being in the art world will help you be in the art world. So it worked out well, <laughs> and you plan to stay there at the Trumpet Center for, for a long, long time. Yeah, uh, as, as long what? as they'll have me. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Um, yeah. And I think you and I might have talked about uh, Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way, at yes. one point. Oh, yeah. For those of you who are aspiring artists out there, I would recommend that you pick up this book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And um, I think Trina is one of the ones who really followed through in terms of, Julia recommended that every day you go to a journal and write like three pages, just 
stream of consciousness, not for anybody else to read or something like that. And I, I think Trina has been doing a lot of that, yeah, right? Or a lot of creativity. I've definitely, mm. I've definitely is, followed with her, her advice on that. And it, it helps you process things. And, and um, a lot of times I'll almost have a, a conversation with myself in the morning in my writing. And, um, and I'll convince myself to do something. I might convince myself to try a new series of paintings or, yes, or something yeah. like that. So, so it's a way of getting in touch. It's almost like meditation, but it's, it's a little bit more uh, tangible. <laughs> Which is wonderful. And Julie also talks about, or this book uh, by Frederick Frank called The Zen of Seeing, talks about the meditation of, of looking at something and drawing it. He says you don't really see something until you draw it. Mm -hmm. So you could go on vacation, for example, and if you draw uh, the, a building, a beautiful Renaissance building, whatever, you really see it, all those details. And same thing with a tree or a squirrel or whatever, any little thing, a leaf, yes. you really see it. You go into almost like a hyper alert state where you're yeah. just really aware of everything. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. and it, it's crystal clear, which is, yeah. which is one of the reasons I love art so much and, and yes. why I pursue it. And that's part of, I guess, my aspirations is to, to share that with other people that, um, that, that creating art yeah. can really be so, you know, therapeutic. Yes, and, and fulfilling, right? Yes, and fulfilling. It helps open your senses, I think, to the world, to the beauty of the world. I think once you've painted it, right, or drawn. Right, right. it just slows then, you down and, yeah. and helps you be more in the moment and, and just more aware. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I had a quote on Daily Meditations about that about five days ago. Maybe it was with your painting, I don't know, from Julia Cameron, Possibly. about slowing down and focusing and you know that's what art helps us do and be in the present moment yep. something like that it was about five days ago or something well thank you Trina thanks, thanks. and so Rita could you tell us uh, what your ultimate goals are and aspirations and do you plan to stay at the Trump Center for the art well, uh, for like, the arts for like the rest Trina's, of your career yes as Trina said as long as they'll have us <laughs> 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 so what are your goals uh, Rita well so, I to paint to paint, yeah. To paint. You love painting too. You love the process of it, the meditation of it, or what? What? What inspires you? Well, different things that you see, are different things that happen to you, and I know that I won't be painting abstracts forever. I do plan to get back to realism oh, because there's yeah. more blue houses out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a backlog. Yeah. There, there's about eight of them, eight more, besides the ones that I've done. And I would like to have a show sometime called, I couldn't call it the House of Blues because I'd be <laughs> sued. So I think I'll call it Houses of Blue. Yeah, yeah. And they're all yeah. really painted that color. They have to be painted that color. So you're like Paul, you love blue, because Paul has a lot of blue <laughs> in his painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Shot, <laughs> Do you have favorite blues like Cobalt, Ultramarine? Well, Ultramarine is the ultramarine. color. Yeah. The, the, the houses are that color. Uh, ultramarine, wonderful. With white trim, they and sing. Yeah. You paint in acrylic as well, right? I gave, once oil, once acrylic came out, I put the oils away because they take way too long to dry. Yes, yeah. yeah be, because some of them, like alizarin crimson, takes years to dry. Oh, oh. It really does. And you, yeah. you can't paint over it till it's dry. Yeah. So, you, well, I always work on like three or four paintings or more at the same time. Yes. But, but yeah. still, the acrylics, and you can just do so much more with them. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you, Rita. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Thank you. Paula, could you tell us, what are your goals? Do you plan to stay at Western Avenue Studios and to grow there? I plan Do you plan to, to get new galleries, representation, or anything? No, I'm working towards that. that. Sometimes it takes one step at a time to get there, get that representation. Yeah. But I have, I'm very comfortable at Western Ave. Yep. You um, have a good time. How I long have, have you been there, time. Five years. Five years. Five years. And That's your room number again at Western A408. Avenue? 408. A408. Directly, directly off the modern elevator, as off I call it. Off the modern it. elevator. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Easy to get to. Right. As far as goals go, I'm a little bit with these two here. My goal <laughs> is to push myself a little, yeah. but my goal is really, if I'm happy with the product that I finish with, that's it. That's my goal. Yes. You know? Wonderful. So that's where it is. And you're painting with all kinds of media, right? Uh, Oil, oil, acrylic, acrylic pen and ink, pen and ink watercolor. watercolor. Do you, ever, you do pastels once in a while? I do no? pastels. I you're have a few pastels. Wow. We've, when you're in art school, we were exposed to every medium. Of yeah. course, you navigate to the one you love the most, yeah. which was watercolor. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to push myself a little bit into the oils. I find the oils I'm a little freer with. 
Yeah. Oh. And I have a little more freedom with why, the oils. Why are you freer with the oils? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm using a larger brush. Um, I, I, I don't seem to care as much as being so tight with the oils as I am with the watercolor. Yeah, yeah. So, and the we'll watercolor, see what happens. Yeah. I love You're my watercolors. Amazing. And you do it with pen and ink quite often. Right, and I do pen and you ink did and watercolor. Chomsky Center for the Arts. Yeah, thank you. In watercolor and pen and ink, yes. and it's amazing. Did pen you, and you ink. You made prints, didn't you? Of yes, that I one? did. The pen and ink will uh, loosen me up. Yeah, oh, really? I can just do the pen and ink, no pencil, just do the whole drawing pen and ink. Wow. Just drop the watercolor in. Wow. But when it comes to my true watercolor, I love to sit there zone out and just paint and relax. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Thank Paul. you. Thank you for having me. Well, Virginia, um, what are your, let's, I'll hold up this other painting you brought in while we're talking, if we can. Well, the other one was a print, and this is a, a, a an original? An original. Uh, so. I see a nice sign in back there, Blue Lotus, 2013, Virginia Peck. <laughs> right. Nice. And uh, this was actually a uh, Buddha that's at the MFA. Um, oh. that I took photographs of, and it's black. The, the, the original in the museum is an all-black Buddha. So this, oh. this kind of shows the underpainting, and I've covered the underpainting in some places and not in others. Is it acrylic, did you say? I'm sorry. It's acrylic. Acry acrylic, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Could you tell us more about it? Or well, um, <laughs> let's see. Um, sorry, it's, yeah, your water. it's over there, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you use a knife or a p brush? Yeah, a knife in, of course, the places where it's, you know, a lot of texture and stuff. Yeah. Um, and you can see, I think there's, there's some brushwork here and there. But, um, and the underpainting was definitely probably a lot of brush. A lot of um, brush. Yeah. Wonderful. So. Does this have any, well, you can't say exactly what it means, right? Because all of your Buddhas probably have a similar theme or meaning for you. Yeah, it's all about, you know, serenity yeah. and compassion and yes. love and yes. <laughs> meditation, kind of all the good stuff. Yes. That do you, you do meditate, right, Virginia? I do, do yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do, do yoga. Yeah. Nice. So. So you've studied Buddhism and, and that kind of thing, and, yeah. and so you represent a lot of that with your art and your paintings. Right. I, I think, yeah, I, I try to do that sometimes too, you know, uh, represent spirituality in paintings to give it meaning. You know, what's the purpose of the painting? Mm -hmm. I want to convey this uh, feeling of love, compassion, forgiveness, mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just haven't gotten around to do, <laughs> doing it <this> yet. <laughs> <laughs> But I will, maybe, someday, <laughs> if I live a little longer. <laughs> but that's my goal, though. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Virginia. Sure. We need to end the show. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know about you, but the time just flew by, and I had such a great time talking with all of you. It's amazing um, to have such great artists with us today. It's a true honor for me, and I think for all the viewers at home, to have you come here to Chelmsford and... Uh, show your beautiful artwork and talk about it. It's a rare thing, and hopefully we could do these a uh, couple of times a year, maybe these art specials. So thank you very much, Paul Padula, for thank being you. here. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. My, thank you. Always happy to be back in my hometown. Yes, hometown <laughs> of Chelmsford. And thank you, Trini yeah, Teal, for you. being here. Thank you for inviting me. It was <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Paula Mingalelli. You're welcome. That was a good discussion we had at Open Studios one day about you doing the show. Yes, Remember? right, right, yes. yeah, it was probably that our was idea December, together or yeah, something. That was great. And I said, oh yeah, let me light, start you lighting did. it up. And wow, and I did. Yeah. Thank you very much, Don oh, Leck, for being here. Being here. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much, Rita Thompson. Oh, thank you. It was great. Thank you very much, Virginia thank Peck. Thank you, Tom, it's been great. And I'm going to be there on your daily meditations page using yeah. a lot of your pieces, <laughs> which I think I've used yeah. all of them. Yeah, all of your pieces I've used on that Facebook page. If you haven't checked it out yet, you might want to check it out. Daily Meditations on Facebook. I also have a group called Chelmsford Arts on Facebook. You don't have to live in Chelmsford. There's about 310 members at the moment. Um, and thank you for this wonderful crew. Uh,